Welcome to the Resistance Broadcast, everybody. Darkness rises, and who caught that friggin' lightsaber? We are going to talk about that <laughs> today on the show. Lacey thinks she caught it. Maybe she did. Maybe that's the big reveal. Imagine uh, that. Actually, like, seriously, imagine it is me. You, know, you guys are watching the show, yeah. and you're like, <laughs> you're Lacey like, didn't go have a baby. She went to go be in the Acolyte. Oh gosh. All that time I was away from the podcast, I was in England <laughs> catching a lightsaber. But you, you I don't think you're good at catching things though. So I don't know. I didn't think that it would be you. Why are you saying that? I played sports my whole life. You're good at catching? Like sports stuff? Yeah. No, like 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 steel rods. You're asking me if I'm good at catching rods? Like that's how like you're starting this show? <laughs> We're, I, I told people it's going to be on fire tonight, and it is because we we got a lot yeah. to talk about. So the first reveal is Lacey's in the acolyte. Uh, she's the catching person rods. You know, I'm really good at it. Catching steel mm -hmm. rods, side hand. Uh, so <laughs> who knows? Uh, or it would even be cool if you were just like Carrie Ann Moss's catch double or like hand double. You know, if that's her, even we're gonna speculate. Talking about no me idea. catching stuff. I don't know. It's getting a little catch a cold. My whole family's been probably, sick of dodging it. It's like probably me. reversed. It's probably holding it, and then they yank it out. They just yank it. Yep. Yeah. yeah, that could be sort of like Vader and Empire with the with Hans Blaster. You never know. Yeah. But there is a lot <laughs> to get into today. A lot of news dropped in other aspects of Star Wars that we'll try to kick off the show with here. But we want to welcome everybody for joining us, John, James, and Lacey, with you as always here in the base, and so are you. So thank you, whether you're listening or watching, however you're taking this in. Thanks so much for allowing TRB to be a part of your Star Wars loving experience. Uh, but yeah, the Acolyte is going to be our main focus in the Resistance Report. We're going to talk about that trailer. We're not going to do like a walkthrough of the trailer bit by bit, but we will bring up some images and talk about favorite parts. And of course, get the tin foils hats on because Speculation Nation is our destination. Um, but before that, James Lacey, um, we got... Phantom Menace, which we knew was coming back to theaters, but then Lucasfilm's like, you know what? Screw it. All nine movies. Let's do it all. All nine <laughs> and Sony's movies. like, and every Spider-Man. <laughs> it's just uh, like... everything. Yeah. No it's solo all just Rogue coming one. back to theaters. Think of a no movie. Solo or Rogue Think One. But episodes one through nine on May the 4th, uh, the Phantom Menace showings will have a special look at the Acolyte too. Uh, and then beyond that, uh, obviously Star Wars Celebration um, in Japan next April, April 18th to the 20th. Tickets go on sale on May 2nd. And we have the, the key art came out, which, uh, as they say, chef's kiss looks so good. Everyone's going to want that on a T-shirt, I'm sure. Uh, I believe we have that to pull up here. There it is. So you got Darth Vader, a very sinister looking Vader, which is that the shot from Obi-Wan, like that POV shot of the grand Inqu inquisitor on the ground it looks like it could be but anyway oh yeah you got a little mount pg there some i would imagine fighters. it's probably just some, from someone's mind's eye you know just mm -hmm. you know, a cool I shot of vader but in my mind's eye <laughs> kenobi um, i like the the flag and everything yeah. it is cool yeah yeah lacy what do you th what do you think i know you're excited about celebration but what do you think about the key art and are you more excited? Does it feel more real that uh, we're going to be heading to Japan in a year? Yeah, I'm. I'm pumped. I. Uh, I'm not going to lie. As soon as that news was announced, I immediately felt anxiety about getting tickets. <laughs> like immediate. Yeah. I was already putting it on my calendar. Like need to be a, a like nobody bother me from this time to this time. Like you know that kind of thing. And like I already am talking with other people. Like okay, what are we going to do to get tickets and uh, you know, it's kind of kind of hectic. And I've been checking like when flights go up because, you know, they only book flights so far out. So we're not there yet. And then like hotels are like celebration. A lot of planning goes into mind already. But yeah. I am hyped that I am potentially uh, making a trip that's been a lifelong bucket list trip for me. Um, once in a lifetime mm -hmm. type place. And it's going to celebrate Star Wars. So what's better than that? Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I'm excited for that. And yeah, getting getting the tickets is the key and then booking everything else and then just the waiting game um, for what's ahead. But there are things uh, sooner 
that are coming that we're very excited about. And of course, Acolytes, one of them. But for anyone who was with us live, if you're in the live chat, we are going to be doing Ask the Resistance later. So, you know, maybe you want our thoughts on, you know, some Acolyte stuff, uh, whatever. Any Star Wars questions, just pop it in the chat and use hashtag Ask the Resistance. Uh, if you'd like to support us with a super chat, we thank you for that. That also will punch it and light speed you up to the front, whether that's for Ask the Resistance or just getting that comment on the show. And we'll discuss your comment um whether it's about uh you know the acolyte star wars or or whatever so uh we're just glad everyone's here with us and i think that's all the stuff at the top did i miss anything i know a lot of stuff we're getting blue milk yeah i was gonna say blue milk hasbro uh is revealed figures for a show that hasn't come out yet so that was a new thing (laughs) yeah (laughs) Yeah. sorry (laughs) oh i did it again too much stuff too much stuff yeah, lot, I keep kicking. It's the it's the the full screen and not the uh, switch over. But yeah, but we've got all the new figures and stuff, which were interesting because. And uh, answer me this really quick: Isn't this the thing that we complain about? Is that the figures usually aren't out by the time the show comes out, or do that's they? That's the thing. Everybody. Least, no, know, that's the thing. Everybody like can. one small run no. of a few figures. No, it's okay. So it's this always is been the first nothing. time actually getting ahead of it. I mean, since the movies, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And by yeah. the way, this pose, totally on purpose, right? Oh, that's definitely a Matrix pose. No Matrix pose, about yeah. It. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. 100%. I hope they don't get too winky with that because Carrie Ann Moss, you know, she's done other things, you know, but... Yeah. Like <laughs> Matrix 4. Yeah. I mean, they had they had Woody Harrelson <laughs> standing at a bar in Solo. It's like, come on, guys. Jeez. Seriously. <laughs> Um, but yeah, I'm excited, uh, about the acolyte. Um, I know we're going to hop into that in just a minute, but anything else before we hop into the resistance report? I feel like there's other stuff that we didn't talk about, but I, I mean, they kicked off Disney and Lucasfilm kicked off the, uh, March to May 4th campaign. So that yep. happened this mm-hmm. week where today they had Hayden Christensen at the empire building to, uh, empire, empire State building? building, empire state building. I was like, can <laughs> the thinking about how to of empire. <laughs> he renamed it's it. like, there's a lot of like empire being thrown around. So I'm trying right. my best to properly say it. So it's yeah. March of March to May 4th. Right. And it's Wait, the Imperial March. I was going to say the yeah. month of March is Imperial March. Mm-hmm. And then they're focused on empire figures going into May 4th. So they launched everything at the empire state building with Hayden Christensen with empire figures as in, Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, etc. And yeah. you also saw that come from Hasbro where they had bad guys. They're doing the whole villain thing. It's a lot of Empire, Empire, Empire. Is but this the Hayden first time we've great. ever heard Imperial March? This is the I've first never... time they've done that campaign. Yeah. Yeah, I'd never... I was like, oh, that's clever. Why haven't they done that forever? You know? Yeah. They've well, never done the road to May 4th either. I, I mean, yeah. I guess I just had never thought about that phrase, the Imperial March, like, oh, it's Imperial March. Put out your Star Wars stuff. You know, yeah. I've heard May the 4th, and it's like that pun has been around for a long time. Yeah. But I, uh, I've never heard Imperial March. I felt that that was new. I was like, oh, interesting. I, I, I think the, the force is strong with this marketing campaign. I'm a big Absolutely. fan. Um, I think it's great. <laughs> for those of you listening, you know I hate that phrase. And if any company or brand ever uses it, I immediately roll my eyes and go, ugh. And guess what? StarWars.com used it today. And I was like, come on, guys, you're better than this. <laughs> the force is strong with blank. Like, hmm. come on, use something well, else. Let's hope the force or is this strong. is where the fun begins. That's the other thing they always use. We get it. Everything's fun. <laughs> yeah, the only thing that bothers me about that is that 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 line got hijacked from Han Solo and everyone thinks it's an Anakin Skywalker line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Here's where the fun begins. Han Solo, nineteen in 1977, AD our time. I I know it sounds I sound like such a jerk when I say this, but like it really to me sounds like someone doesn't know Star Wars when they're marketing something something with the forces strong with blank, or it's just lazy, lazy or what? they don't yeah. know. Yikes. Like like Good Morning America is always like the force is strong with this trailer. The force is strong with our next guest. The force is strong with this <laughs> yeah. book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah like Kelly Ripa, like Kelly Ripa should say it. You know, like like that type yeah. of person. I forgive her because 
just but, ran off the cue card. But 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 uh, the official stuff, I don't know. But anyway, come on, guys, uh, come on. We have bigger fish to fry here. Be creative. Take oh, they announced the the pod from Phantom Menace too, John. Wait, what did they do? <laughs> the little swimming pod thing. Oh, they the did, toy. John. Yeah. They oh, announced yeah. a little like what is it? A bongo? Bon- a bongo. Yeah. Bongo. Yeah. Do 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 do. So we're that much closer to a jacked fish figure. <laughs> <laughs> and that much closer to resistance report. Should we get that there? much closer to resistance report? Yeah, we're 11 right. minutes. Are we going to get blue milk, like though? Yeah. Do we uh, yeah, we have blue milk. We can do a, a blue milk gallon challenge. And oh, that whoever. sounds like a terrible idea. Uh, yeah. I'm not going to do that, but I will try <laughs> it on air. The blue vomit challenge. <laughs> yeah, right. I will not yeah. be doing that. No right. bantas were hurt in the production yeah. of this milk. All right, let's hop into the Resistance Report. It's the Resistance. All right, the Resistance Report this week is mainly going to be focused just on the Acolyte. We'll talk about uh, posters. We'll talk about the trailer. We'll talk about just the rollout in general, fan reception, our favorite parts of everything. Um, that also includes uh, a couple interviews with uh, people involved, uh, including specifically Leslie Headland, uh, who did multiple interviews with multiple different um, publications. So, uh, what are we going to do first? Let's just, should we look at the uh, posters? Just kick it off. Yeah, let's, let's warm it. it up with that. Yeah, yeah. We got one right. poster right before the trailer announcing Mm -hmm. the trailer (laughs) yeah and then the day of we got another trailer or we got the trailer we got another poster yeah that's the i i think it looks like octo dune three but yeah it looks like octo yeah it could be maybe there's that second sun hiding behind that's funny that you guys think it looks like a planet with no water (laughs) and a planet of endless water that looks like clouds to me, <laughs> like water or clouds, one or the other, like yeah. fog. Yeah. Yeah, I think they're cool posters. Um, someone we pointed out, I I got to get better at giving credit to these good tweets and stuff, but I retweeted the, them. Yeah. So that the lightsaber in the poster is uh, who's, whose lightsaber is it? Carrie and Moss's character. So either she's doing the killing or master and dara and it was at star wars on high two pointed it out good good job good job they highlighted the uh figure with her clip it clipped on her belt and circled it and showed that the the hilt matched this hilt as well yeah so i have to give them credit because that was a good find yeah yeah so i i mean i'm curious what that all means it clearly in the teaser after watching a couple times like right after the girl says i see fire they cut right to Carrie Ann Moss's character doing an ominous like turning with the hood. And it's like, are they trying to get us to think that she's betraying the Jedi? Like, you know, because if a manless Denberg is the main character, I assume that she's not going to be redeemed. I hope not. I hope this isn't one again, you know, one of those where it's like Reva repeat because at the beginning you see mm. the little kids I'm assuming that's her who says I sense fire. That's what I thought. It might have been May right there at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. May. Yeah, I got to get used to the characters again. I got to. We should maybe even open up the data bank and get and go through the bios a little bit. But I, but, I don't. You took that care. You took May. You take May as like actually evil, like a bad dark side I, character. I, I well, if she's the protagonist, and the show's called The Acolyte, I assume that she's going to be this new follower of. The dark side in some way and- yeah especially because leslie talks about in her interview which we're going to discuss more she talks about how she's looking at it from the other direction where the jedi are the institution whereas in the yeah. original star wars movies it was flipped yeah like the yeah. empires the insul- uh, the you know the sith and the empire are the institution. Yeah, but she's working then- with master soul is she uncover the mystery yeah that's the synopsis of the show I it's, think- it's, am, it's- am, I, am i wrong we're, well, we're here live am i wrong no, I, I thought the... that she wasn't working with him. She was his ex Padawan. True, but she finds herself having to get back in contact with them because they together have to unravel the mystery of why these Jedi's are being killed. Right? It could yeah. be. 
I I I can see a scene where they encounter each other and they fight, and then he realizes it's her, and it's one of yeah. those things. But I I don't know. Like that's that's I think that's the beauty of of this right now is we really don't have all the details. Um, I'm just going by what I'm assuming. And if it is someone else, I, I just don't want it to be too many twists and turns and too many betrayals and that sort of thing. And I also um, am not looking for this sort of you know redemption angle either. So, so you know. the synopsis is in Star Wars The Acolyte, an investigation into shocking crime spree pits, pits a, respected a respected Jedi master against, okay, a dangerous warrior from his past. As more clues emerge, they travel down a dark path where sinister forces reveal it's not all what it seems yeah it doesn't mean they travel together literally it means like their fates travel down a dark Collide. path yeah ah i guess yeah that's but how i took it i did not take it that way at all and that's why they sh I, at the beginning i took it as that was her and she was always kind of like the the problem child like saying like i see fire everyone's like i yeah. see balance well, I, and love I know and that whatever. i know that she definitely like fell away from the jedi and is like dark tendency but I, but i yeah i don't know i i guess i just didn't see her as like pure evil she was just more like on the dark side actually kind of reminds me a lot of the character from the uh ronin series mm -hmm. even though i guess technically he was sith at one point or something like that but he was just sort of a bad character that was on a path I, but he wasn't like I, totally gone because he was still doing good things to me it's you know you, you see her in the beginning you see her fighting carrie Ann moss's character who's a jedi you see I think her they're fighting training. i don't think they're fighting really so I then that has a whole other twist because she's, an, <laughs> she's i think an she's working with jedi idara which is Carrie and Moss's character. May and them are working together. She has to travel to this place to meet up with her because Carrie and Moss's character is being secretive about training her because she's infiltrating the Jedi. And so you think Master Carrie Soul is the one that's like the Obi Wan Kenobi that's like, what is going on? And he's looking into it. So you think Carrie and Moss's character is evil? Is that what you're saying? Mm hmm. Mm. I do because I feel like she's kind of like, sketchily sitting in a cantina to me it just and then the other girls coming may's coming in it just seems like she's waiting for her and then they meet up they fight they do whatever they're training and then um it would also be a nice uh kind of juxtaposition to what we know of carrie and moss as an actress which is she's best known for the matrix which is a good character so when you're coming into the show you're like ah oh, she's so cool she's the hero and then that would be the flip would be like, actually, she's not the hero. She's the bad guy. And I wouldn't mind because if the, sh the show is a mystery. So the long game is trying to uncover something, which is clearly like who's pulling these strings with the Sith and all that stuff. So I hope that all, all the other elements are more like linear and like what you're seeing is legit. And so because... I, I don't know. Like, I, I'm not, I don't know how interested I'm in being like, oh, she's a Jedi. And then, like, in episode, you know, eight, they're like, just kidding. She's been behind it the whole time. I, I don't know if I'm into that. So I hope they just tell us, like, I yeah, don't think she, she's, behind she's a Jedi. Anything. I think she's just been sneakily working with the Jedi while also training this person to be bad. Yeah, maybe. Right. Because yeah. they have yeah. to have someone that infiltrates that starts saying, you know, there has to be someone that goes, the Jedi are terrible i don't like the jedi i'm gonna go this path for more power but yet there's the question where we're all always asking is how did the jedi not know like it didn't take until palpatine stuff probably happened before that as we've seen in the high republic as we've seen elsewhere that like there are cracks so maybe there, she's one of the cracks this mm. reminds me of the jedi lost dooku book because dooku was trying to get into the place where they kept all these artifacts specifically even some dark side artifacts and there was like a keeper the jedi keeper that was like protecting all that stuff but the further you got into the book you found out that the keeper had also been like messing with it and it was turning her dark mm -hmm. so she was sort of like vetting other jedi to be like if you're down to do this to get into this stuff like i'll let you through and we'll do it in secret and the fact that the poster 
seemingly is her character's lightsaber and it's like got the blood streak like to me that is foreshadowing like she's the bad guy yeah that's a little telling what is funny though is like they're building up all this mystery leslie headland's like whatever you think of the acolyte you're you're wrong yeah. it's a big mystery and, and then, then watch like, me straightforward day, what it is. day one it's like oh the uh the action figure has this same lightsaber and she did say <laughs> she's the villain she did, yeah she, she did say the out. trailer like the team that put together the trailer sort of nailed what she was going for, which means to me, I mean, that could mean to me, she likes that they're spinning it to like twist our minds on what's happening or sure. they nailed it in terms of like delivering how those characters should be represented. So I, you know, I don't, I'm not sure. Um, I know Russian doll has a bunch of twists and turns and all that sort of stuff too. Um, so maybe that's her bag, but why don't Can we you go back for a second, James? Oh yeah. Go back to the uh, previous to... shot. Yeah. So the previous shot is May and Adara yeah. kind of doing the force fighting that we've seen from obviously Ray and Kylo in the sequel trilogy and other characters. I was just going to point out that I like her Star Wars hair. She's got like kind of like a oh, bun at right. the top that goes into a ponytail. It's cool. I could see people rocking that celebration. Yeah, I'm all for Star cool. Wars hair. They've definitely um, cleared out this cantina. Everybody ran out of here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they were like, "I just want to eat my noodles." <laughs> but that's a, like, mm -hmm. who's who's training in a cantina? So I feel like they are fighting. I don't know. Well, this is the first time they meet. Yeah, I don't know. This is fighting that I. If Lacey's, I think what Lacey's saying, and maybe I'm putting words in your mouth, but what I'm getting from this is that she is like maybe hired as an assassin or something to kill this person, but then when the fight doesn't go right, uh, you find out that like. The the mass the Jedi Master hired her to try to kill her, just mm -hmm. to bring her in or something. You know what I mean? I mean like, that's a like, good I'm idea. I'm the one I, who hired you. You know, and it's I like, just think that they're working like, together. Yeah, I'm just saying this is their initial like meeting. They right. wouldn't like meet up in the bar and start fighting. Maybe after maybe not. Already been training for a month. You know, I don't know. I just I just watched. I didn't finish it because. My kids came home, but I started watching the new Roadhouse and fights and bars are back, baby. Let me tell you, <laughs> that movie rules. Um, all right. So I got the data bank up so I can actually try to reference some of these names going forward. So apologize when I'm using actors names constantly. But why don't we try to stir some ideas up here and uh, see what we got in the super chats? All right. Uh, so first up, we have Stubby One Kenobi. What up, man? He said, you guys are still awesome. Awesome. Me, me. Awesome. Um, awesome. He me. said, awesome. Me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, hand holding lightsaber is palps for sure. <laughs> I really hope not stubby because I'm good with Palpatine for now. Like I've had enough Palpatine. I'm good. But you guys know that. <laughs> yeah, what do you guys think? Alive, no. I don't think it's alive, one of yeah. these characters from the show. I think it's, it's going to be a character, character that is intro introducing. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, I think it's May. I, I think it's pretty obvious it's her, but that's just me. I've been wrong before. I think it's Carrie Ann Moss's character. Interesting. I think Thanks that's when she, I think that's when she's going to reveal that uh, she's no good. Mm, she's, she's no so good. Powerful. That'd be sick. yeah. I mean, there's there's a lot to dig into in terms of speculating on this stuff, but uh, yeah, isn't wait isn't Carrie Ann Moss's character no she's not never mind she's Next. with soul earlier in the trailer at a different time i don't not, remember to be not honest. in the forest yeah no uh next simplify danny what up danny and mark of course uh thanks for the super chat danny says excited about the accolade do you think i need to read those high republic books collecting dust on my shelf or will we manage without reading them i always stand by uh personally that they wouldn't be making the show if you were forced to read something they wouldn't be making a show or a movie that would force people to take in other media to get what's going on. It's mm -hmm. only supplementary like, oh, it helps add to the lore. It helps add to knowing, you know, Vernestra who's in the show or stuff like that. It it doesn't necessarily take away. And I think the fact that Dave Filoni has been very adamant about that with Ahsoka uh, not having to watch Rebels or the Clone Wars or anything like that, like the fact that they're telling you you don't have to watch the other media going into these shows mm -hmm. i don't think you need to read anything but that's just yeah me. never never essential but always enhancing sure agreed yeah thanks for the super chat that's it for now yeah i think right. with that <clears throat> like i don't know that this will ever ever happen but 
if Disney ever sold Lucasfilm, there's a very good chance that whatever studio bought it was like, I want the movies, I want the shows. The other stuff you can just toss. And <laughs> I and and what I mean by that is that's how executives are. They're like, I want the stuff that's gonna make the money and you know, whatever. And like think about Ahsoka. Like there's plenty of people who watch Ahsoka who never watched Rebels and they felt fine watching Ahsoka. And if you could do that while not watching four seasons of a show, um, I think we're gonna be okay with people entering this. I I have I read a few chapters of the first Republic book and I was like, I can't go on this journey. I just can't. I don't have the time for it. I re had to reread a bunch of pages because I wasn't paying attention. It's just like I I cannot read Star Wars like fiction. <laughs> I can read the reference books. Those are my favorites. I can't read my Star Wars. That's not that's that's not me. And then take me and I'm a diehard Star Wars fan. The general fans like if you had to read all 563 High Republic books in order to get this show, like Lacey said, you're setting yourself up for trouble. And Leslie Headland said there's one character from the High Republic in this, and that's the only one. And she's maybe saving some for the others. So I think it's like there's going to be things in there for High Republic fans to be like, oh, yes, that, yes, that, yes, and that, yes. But that is not necessarily consequential to the story um which is cool you know we do have one more super chat that just popped in from angry magma what up man he said do you think we'll see yoda in the next trailer good I question do james what I do you think hmm, what are we talking about on monday john we're talking about will yoda have a big role in the show <laughs> yeah i think like it to answer this question quickly angry i hate to send you down the line but monday's episode we're going to talk a lot about yoda possibly yeah. in in this show and how we think we're that character is going to be incorporated but trailer james I, I mean what do you think regardless of that i'm trying to save it for monday i say um <laughs> i say no james so James is saying he's trying to save it for Monday. James doesn't like being put on the spot to say whether something like will the force. I think I feel like that's your nightmare, especially in a live setting, like having to like make a decision on something permanently. I think Possibly. we will see Yoda in a trailer. Yeah, you think? I think it's an easy way to get a normal fan that isn't into the High Republic, that isn't really tuned into Star Wars, to get hyped. And there's a reason why this trailer had more views than any other trailer because there's Jedi, there's lightsabers, there's all this cool stuff. Anybody can look at Yoda and be like, that's Yoda. Whether you like Star Wars or not, people just know who Yoda is. I think it would be an easy thing for Star Wars and Disney to do, especially because in the past we've seen them use Darth Vader with Rogue One and he's like not really in that movie that much. You know, he's in bits and pieces. Oh. Um, but Would you like to make a pie bet with me? That he's going to be in the trailer? Yeah. No, absolutely not. I did, I'm, done, how, how I'm done getting pies in my face. I have lost how twice. How about, a <laughs> how about a different pie bet where the loser has to send a pizza to the other person's house? Pizza. Pie. So like a pizza pie bet. <laughs> I mean, yeah. sure. and then they get to throw it in your face. The pizza <laughs> no. delivery person throws it. <laughs> yeah. Gillen's like, I'll bet a pizza oh! on it. Sure. I think Yoda's going to be in the trailer before May 4th. Right. Uh, Pizza bet. Or on May 4th, yeah. That could yeah. be an awesome trailer that they release on May 4th. Being like, hey, Acolyte's a month from now. Here's a yeah. trailer with Yoda in it. And you got See, everyone this is why the I wanted to say watching, that. There's uh, so much discussion over the debate of which one. Like, uh, I'll bet a pizza. I, I see both Let's sides. Go. I was kind of guessing. You know, Any pizza, pizza you want, on. I'll drive to the special pizza place to get you the pizza you like, and I will drive it to your house. You're going to drive to Derby, Connecticut and get sure. me Roseland a pizza. The greatest pizza. Sounds great. I love driving my car, so sure. On the Western Hemisphere. Uh, greatest pizza in the world. I'll just say it. <laughs> Forget you, Italy. All right. <laughs> thanks, uh, Angry. Mad thank mama. you. Yeah, thanks for the super <laughs> chats. Appreciate it very much. Um, that, so another aspect of this, you know, I know online discourse and stuff, which I, I care less and less about like every day. It's amazing. But the whole like how are they going to be able to make this make sense and stuff like that which makes me think and i want to i don't want to get too far into this because we're going to talk about it in depth on monday 
but I don't think like you. I don't know that Yoda's going to be a big part of this. I, I think whoever finds out about this stuff, we might be in a Rogue One situation where those those people don't go home, mm. or like something some something else happens. I, this is not this show is not going to end well for whatever Jedi are involved in the story. So I think we all need to prepare for that. And then also the the uh, the aspect of Leslie Headland saying in it might have been the Collider interview, but her, her saying like she's not a fan of emotional cliffhangers. So she has ideas for multiple seasons, but however this series ends, it's not going to be one of those like, you know, tugging at your heartstrings thing that we've seen in other uh, Star Wars shows like Mando season two. It's not going to be like that. We're not going to be like sad or worrying or something like that. It's going to have a definitive ending. It may have a mystery to it towards the end, but she said, quote like she's not emotional cliffhangers aren't her thing i think we have to expect that this is not going to be an easy show in the sense of like a happy ending because right. the poster that they put out had blood on it like <laughs> that's not exactly like a oh awesome like yay it's very <laughs> much like people are gonna die <laughs> people, yeah. people are gonna get hurt people are gonna die and things are getting dark uh, yeah. they, which I know the you word don't dark. like, Lacey. But do you think the average? I fan don't like if it okay ends that? that way. I don't like if it ends that way. I like if there's darkness, darkness, darkness. Something happens, and then they oh they figured it out, and they're all happy. Yay, things worked out. That's the story I like. But that doesn't mean I don't like a darker story, or because I loved Andor. Um, I don't know. I, I think that people are going to be attracted to this show more than anything else because of lightsabers and Jedi. Like people love Jedi and, and lightsabers. And when you see that in a show or in a trailer, even if you don't like Star Wars, um, you'd be interested. Although I'm going to be honest, I showed this to Matt, <laughs> this trailer to Matt, to see what he, his reaction was. I didn't say anything. I just showed it to him. And when it ended, he goes, what was that? I have no idea what's going on. And I was just like, okay. He's like, I have no interest in this. <laughs> so I mean, he has no interest in anything. Star Wars, <laughs> that's but. not true. Well, Star Wars, sure, but yeah. I mean, I thought he would have loved Andor. And no, I didn't mean in life. Andor and was just like, nah. Yeah, but he doesn't like any Star Wars. To John's point, right? Yeah, he likes Darth Maul. Yeah, and Jar Jar oh. Binks. That's it. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. I I had something in mind that I was going to bring up, but it, I I lost it. But well, do, do we want to talk about chats. other aspects of the trailer? I mean, like yeah, let's see, got... yeah, let's get uh, let's get to the super chats. Let's do the super chats. And oh, then we'll super get to chats. More of the trailer. Yeah, just do them really quick. Uh, Kevin Smith. Yo, Kevin, thanks for hey. the super chat, man. He said, "Love this show, miss you, Hoey. I think either Yoda will bury the secret of the Sith, thinking they ended the threat. Parenthesis speaks to the hubris." Luke says parenthesis what do you guys think of that i like that i like that i miss you too like kev it. you think yoda's uh, gonna be the one that's just like nah it didn't happen <laughs> that would that would upset me pretty badly because yeah, I, I don't see yoda don't as a deceptive type um i know he likes to protect people and that's why you know certain things about you know luke when he didn't tell him obviously about darth vader being his father i understand that but this is a bigger thing i think than mm -hmm. one person to one dad, even though it's Darth Vader. So I, it's a, it's a great idea, and it's not something and, that would be lost on them. So I and, like it. And also, sure. like even even if they did, like they seemingly snuffed it out. It feels weird that like when they're in the chamber later with Anakin and and all that, that Yoda would or and nobody would be like, well, there was that one time, you mm -hmm. know, where they <laughs> right. definitely were back. Yeah. It just, I don't know. I how sure are we that that this is Sith? We keep saying Sith because red lightsabers and dark side, and that's all we know. And we're assuming this is Sith in the background, but like, do we think the Jedi are gonna be like encountering this and being like, that's Sith, or they're just gonna be like, there's a dark side presence, they had a red lightsaber, but oh, like yeah. not even really was... knowing what that means. They call it be... sinister forces, that's what they yeah. call it in the description. I wouldn't be surprised if some mm. of the Jedi aren't that familiar with the Sith because maybe part of what the Jedi have been doing is sort of like ignoring that they existed. 
to avoid any sort of temptation or anything like that. Like sort of like not book burning, but like sort of like, oh, that over there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't worry about that stuff. You know, it also reminded me of does this not happen in the uh, Phantom Menace is Qui-Gon is encountered by Darth Maul and he, they get away. And then immediately he goes to the the high Jedi and he says it was a Sith. Like he I just knew it, it like right away. He was trained in the Jedi arts. Yeah. But um, he does say Sith. Uh, yeah. I think he does say Sith. So yeah. it's interesting because it's like then you have Jedi who are even further away from this timeline being like red lightsaber training in ways of the Jedi. Absolutely. Yeah. Maybe this is how the term like, Sith comes recognize about. him immediately. And also, oh, my God, well. kind of a cowboy. He could have been doing his own research. You know, he's like, there's other libraries here besides the Jedi library. And I'm going to read those books. Yeah, he now. also <laughs> he also could be, you know, he was doing a lot of the um, like prophetic stuff. Like he believed in the pro prophecy and a lot of Maybe. people didn't. So him, like, I don't know who all saw Dune, but like it was kind of the similar things is like things are happening. And if you believe that, you're like, that's the evidence right there. You know what I mean? So he sees mm -hmm. a guy with a red lightsaber. He goes, that's a Sith. He is right because the mm -hmm. prophecy is coming true. But at the time, they're like, I don't know, Sith, you know, like the, like the Sith that we've seen in the past were Sith, but we didn't count them as Sith because we don't believe in the prophecy. You know, sure. like they just they're ignoring that it is the Sith when it clearly is. Even if somebody probably came up and was like, I'm Sith, they're like, no, you're not. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe. Well, maybe Kevin does go on with another super oh, chat. Right. Thank Dude, you so much, Kevin. Kevin. Thank so you, kind. He says, or the protagonist will die in the end before being able to blow the whistle. The secret dying with him or her. Also, Carrie Ann Moss doesn't make it out of the first episode. She'll be the first big death. I disagree with you there, Kevin. I don't think she's dying for this episode, but that's just me. That would be cool because it's sort of like that. That would be like Drew Barrymore dying at the beginning of Scream. You're like, whoa, like this big star just died. What else is going to happen in this like thing? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. th this I don't know if this is time to bring it up, but we've got <laughs> like what you can't see. Oh, yeah, you can't see the super chat. So he's John Cena. She's hidden by uh, the super chat. Well, let me just say real quick, Kevin, uh, <laughs> you are you are the man. And if anyone who watches us hasn't checked out uh, him on Scoundrels Inc. or on John Roca's channel, like Kevin's always talking Star Wars on his stuff, and he's a smart dude. And he also does uh, the High Republic or Old Republic. He made Old Republic movies based on the games and stuff so kevin you're the man uh miss you too buddy thanks a lot not Appreciate to be weird that. he has the cutest daughter ever <laughs> he does yeah well kevin's adorable so it just makes sense can you put it back james because it's really funny to me <laughs> oh yeah put back the image for people on audio just so you understand the super chat is over the screen and it's literally just me it's like i'm being buried yep oh yeah just like the sith like the secrets of the sith <laughs> thanks kevin yeah. All right, I'm back. <laughs> All right. Right there. So that's that's Plo Koon they're looking at, right? No. That There's person the Chewy at? type character. Although I know Mike uh -oh. Ramori in the chat said this, and I agree with him. I was going to bring that up. Is Soul's hair changes throughout the trailer. Right, because I think this is all flashback. Right. And there's the Joey so, Sack, one of our patrons who makes his... Yeah, that looks just like Joey, trailer. yeah. <laughs> You, so you have you have the 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 Wookiee Jedi back there in the background, and I think he was part of whatever mission this was. It yeah. didn't go very well. Carrion Moss left the order, or, or is Kalnaka. dark side now? Or Kalnaka whatever. is the yeah, Wookiee. Kalnaka and Kalnaka goes off and is like in the woods, living by himself after this, because I think this took place before all that other stuff. Well, I don't know about that because Mother Anasea, the witch character, uh, right. her background on the databank is the background that you see in this image. Mm -hmm. Her background is the similar striped roof background that you see behind Kelnaka. She's uh, standing there, oh, too. So I wonder God. if they went to speak to her about like the dark forces that are happening and she kind of gives them the prophecy of what's going to happen. Yeah, can you go back to that image? So for our audio listeners, right there. 
see her background is very similar lit and looks like the one where all the Jedi are standing there with Kelmaka and Indara. Wait, but so her description is in more current time where she's working with May. I don't know if they say that. They just say that she uh, is the leader of the coven of witches who value their independence and the preser uh, preservation of their beliefs and powers. So you don't know if it's present or it's past. They could go see this character and she could say, hey, an evil dark force is coming. You better be prepared. And they're like, ah, it's fine. And then years later is when it happens. Yeah. So I think, like I said, I think that the Jedi are all gathered together and they're they're on this mission or whatever. And they go and they see her and they talk to her. And then bad things happen. Skip forward years later when May and Soul are trying to track things down. They probably get led back to her again. And so, it's probably like, remember that night? What happened that night? You know, kind of I don't. Stuff. Yeah, the shot, I don't. Well, the shot you just showed, James, I think is them talking to her. I know in the like. past. Yes, but I'm saying yeah. John was saying, "Is that Plo Koon?" I don't think it is. I think it's her. I think it's oh. Mother and Say. You go back to that. It looked a little Plo Koony to me. I, I'm not gonna lie, guys. The the way this is set up, these pictures are so tiny. I cannot see. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I cannot see what I'm clicking on. It's so, so annoying. So it's the one that one. I think they're talking to her. Oh yeah, you're right. Yeah, that is her because that's another person in and the, the background. Hood. Yeah, you see. Yeah. The hood. So yeah, I think this show, like a lot of like mysteries and stuff like that, do the like multiple flashbacks that help uh, uh make us understand the current scene that's happening in the present so i right. think there'll be multiple flashbacks i think we'll have probably the prologue is when we see him with the kids but then this is also another flashback that is obviously after that you see um that soul has like the Pee Wee herman almost haircut and like that flashback and then the bangs you know that always helps as, as i say mm -hmm. people look younger um, so I think it's going to be we're going to flash to all different periods of time. Oh my God, she does fall into the bang theory. Yeah, the she bang has theory. bangs in this shot. And yep. then in the cantina, she has no bangs. Oh, my goodness. Star That's Wars right. with the bangs. Bangs. Uh, oh, it's not just Star Wars. Everything does it. If, you, if you're know, trying to DH someone. Why do they do that? <laughs> you use speaking, the of, um, speaking of flashbacks and stuff, you said that the the when they're kids, when they show the Padawans and, and he's in the thing. That that might be a flashback too from a long they time ago. Because his hair's short here, right? Oh, that yeah, that yeah. I'm not really sure where that would line up. Yeah, that's a good point. Oh. But, but here's the thing: is she says she sees fire, and then later in the trailer we get this too. Right. Go back. Back to that image. <laughs> I got. I figured it out. I know exactly what's happening. He's going to be singing a song. <laughs> and they have to walk towards oh her. God. And as soon as she stops, they have to freeze. And if not, lightsaber through the gut. Are you trying to make a squid game. game joke? Come on, I man. Am. We were like really jiving. We were going <laughs> with theories. Like you can't stop the, the you train. You have to add humor into this. You have to mix humor so, in. I will say my theory was that this is a flashback. So he's younger there. But I, I don't know how much younger because... Mm -hmm. Because of that scene at the very beginning, we're assuming one of the the girl on the left is May, and he's got long pulled back hair here, which makes it seem like more of a master at this point. Yes, than he was. Indara was his master. Carrion Moss was his master back in the day. Now he's a master teaching Padawan. You think so? Hmm. Yes. Oh. Yeah, so yeah. so you're saying that other one is even further back. Correct. Like that's the yeah, beginning that's a of a long the story. time ago. <clears throat> Does that mean Yeah, it could you, be. That means Kel Naka's not gonna be in the present. <laughs> I hope that's he might be. He has to be because they shot him in trees and <laughs> when they showed him at celebration, he was in a forest setting. So, right, like, so that's cool. So so like this is this would be so long ago then, because by the time you get to this point, she's a kid. So then you even have to jump. You have to jump from the far back to this middle ground to then in the. But it doesn't mean they have to go in order. They, they, they may line. bounce this whole thing around based yeah, on you, that's fair. what the story is at that point in time. Because I, I wouldn't shock me if this was one of the first scenes when when they show the little kids. One of the first scenes in the show to establish Amanda Stenberg's character. Uh, as you know, who how she became who she is from such a young age. But did Lisa, you get you, that, John? The thing about the fire. 
Yeah, but Lacey, I think you know, you definitely nailed that they're talking to her. So clearly, that image of her surrounded by those her you know followers or whatever yeah, coven, is yeah. is way way back. That's like way way back. So that character may not be around in the present either. So then, like in the present time, these witches might not even be a factor. They may be something that, like you said, was like prophesizing or warning them. I think this like is that. a prophecy that she's seeing right here when she's running in fire. I think she's seeing her future because she's got hair there that looks like her current hair. May is and she's hair. older, yeah, older and than when she older. was. There is a time. shot, James, and I don't know if you have it in the trailer where she meets up with Soul later and they start fighting. Right here, I'm interested mm -hmm. to see. Yeah, if you go back to him what his hair situation is <laughs> long long hair it's long hair okay so mm -hmm. then that's the question and i know that you're questioning that james is like is it her in the padawan room or is the padawan seeing her i think that's his adult hair sort of like qui-gon like once he became a master that was his look from mm -hmm. now until the end you know mm -hmm. he does have darker robes there than he does in the uh in the room well the it padawan. might be the same but he has a dark jacket on right Mm -hmm. Whereas when he's early on, it's just he's just wearing that and it's in a bright lit room. So that like tan, that light tan color looks more white. Yeah. By the way, the reason people are saying Carrie Ann Moss is only going to is going to die is because people are saying online that she's only credited for one episode on IMDb. But I didn't, yeah. I never believe IMDb because people you can edit that and people can make changes on that and they don't really yeah. say the truth all the time. <laughs> so I would just be like. A little little caution to immediately saying, so, oh, it says a sign on DB. Right. So here's the other thing is all of these Jedi are getting ready to go into the woods and then they're going to fight whatever this thing that, you know, yeah, we see whatever in the this trailer or whatever. Is. Yeah, that, that's this is right before that happens. But also there is the the this character, too, which Kalnaka. Kalnaka. Yep. yeah. he is described as being a loner who like lives here on his own and so they might be going to seek his guidance or yep a you loner know, get who answers. lives yep a solitary life yep or just recruiting they they could be like we got to get people who experienced blank with us back then back in the day like yeah. we're, we're trying to uncover this mystery or something so we we need you to answer the questions or we need you yeah. to come with us or whatever it is yeah so whatever those witches told that group way back when they're whoever is now saying like they were right i have to go get the others who were there with me i think it's gonna be like this recruiting thing so they're gonna go find him and, they're gonna go find you know and to your theory too as soul moves down that path and he comes he retraces his footsteps back to where they were back in the day may might be doing the same thing and that's where they meet up at one point in this forest she throws the red lightsaber it catches it all that but stuff. i don't think she's soul's padawan though because he says he meets an old warrior not his old padawan because soul's padawan is jackie yeah. from logan is his current padawan daphne keen yeah yeah <clears throat> wait but but may is his old padawan no, it just says an old warrior. I don't think they know. Did they specify that it was? His I felt like Padawan? this was just common knowledge, like like in other things that we've heard about this series so that he she can be one of his Padawans as a teacher, but not his apprentice. Mm, mm -hmm. Like, yeah, like his like he was like, in the class, but not his favorite. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I mean, that's yeah. fair. That's He's like, totally she fair. said fire. So can I pick someone else, please? And then the other character, Yord, is a Jedi guardian of the Jedi Temple. Mm -hmm. And a rule follower. Yeah. That's very I have interesting. an image of that character. I just... <laughs> the, it, look, we're trying to and unravel she's... a mystery that we don't know anything about at this point. So we're just talking. Yeah. Well, we ever oh, talked see. about uh, Manny Jacinto is playing like a smuggler type. So he's probably going to be more of like the... Yes the the every man like sort of our our point of view as we're watching all these fantastical characters like he's going to be like you know probably not with the force he's more of like the han solo i was gonna like, say the han solo 
Yeah, I, I get by by my streetwise ways sort of guy. So I'm really He's interested Quimir. in that. Quimir is a former smuggler who now makes his living as a trader, procuring unusual things and enjoying a life of leisure. However, so, he looks very serious in this photo that they include. Even he, though he's yeah. for a life of leisure, he looks very he's gonna, worried. He's going to come across. He's going to find like a Sith holocron and he, they're going to help him like unlock it. Like that's his, that's his role. He's going to have a, a, a you know a- antiquities and all this stuff and he's going to come across like some sort of old ancient sith holocron to give them a hint or a clue to this mystery because it's a detective story slash mystery so it's going to be this unraveling thing that continues to expand as i'm clicking through here i'm just like we're we're like there's so much there's like the planet with the snow we haven't talked really much about vernister row also i i, I want to throw it out there it was in the celebration trailer. The Numoidians are a part of this. Mm-hmm. Um, they just there. I remember a very specific shot of there being like one in the background and then like one turns around close to the camera and it's like, oh, so they're involved. And I imagine just just based on what we know from the show that that is like, hey, I will maybe help you guys rise to power. We'll start an organization called the Trade Federation or something, maybe. Oh this is around God. that time. <laughs> and then they're like, over the next few years, we'll just build that up and build that up. And, and it gets to a point, obviously, where the Trade Federation is, the, uh, is at the, the big enough climax that they can be for the Sith to actually make the move they've been planning for years. So this show, by the way, speaking of Vernestra, takes place one year after the fall of Starlight Beacon in the High Republic books. Oh, it's one year after the... Wait. Yeah, so it says in her description on StarWars.com, but in the year after the fall of Starlight Beacon, while mourning those lost in the destruction, including her own Padawan, Vernestra pulled back from the Order and shifted her focus to heal herself. But that's not... That's not saying... Is that now or is that after this? That doesn't that make any this? sense with her age because in her age in this is like she's a lot older. When the Starlight Beacon went down, she was still a teenager. Oh, was she? Well, the way yeah. they wrote this on the website is very confusing. Where's I think, um, I think what they're saying is in the year after she maybe pulled away from the, the Jedi Order. This is probably in the books and we should just read it. But <laughs> but I think then this is this is way after the fact now when she's here in the show. I wish I, I could like. I'm going to be honest. They see. talk about how her lightsaber changes into a light whip. And I don't know how yeah. I feel about that. <laughs> oh, that's yeah, that's old. She's been using that for a while. I know. I yep. don't know how I feel about James. That. Do we have the uh, the shots of uh, what we assume is Octo? And if it's so, not, there, yeah, terrible. there's this one right here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the next one, which is the opposite look. I think that's got to be it. I, I I think that has to be Octo, especially the first one, because there are multiple islands. And just the mossy caps, it just looks too much like it for them to be like, no, this is a different island that just happens to also be important to the ancient history of the Force or whatever. So I'm very curious what this is going to do in terms of how we view The Last Jedi and Luke and why he went to this island. Are the texts going to be here? Are... Are they going to uncover the text and manipulate the texts to throw the Jedi off their path? Like, there's there's a lot that can be done here on Octo. It's not just going to be like, oh, we just happen to be on this planet. There's a reason yeah. this would be in it. So I hope it is. One, for the aspect of, um, and I think I said this in our poll chat, but anytime Star Wars visits places in stretched out eras, um, it makes it feel more real to me. And the suspension of disbelief, because then, you know, it, you could be like, oh, yeah, th- in 170 years, Luke Skywalker dies there. That rock right there. Like, it's just like a very cool element to it. But also, there's the dark hole that Ray gets sucked down. And maybe do we learn more about what that is? Do we see the creation of that darkness? And then it adds another element to Ray discovering it. That's what it looks like to me is like that's that little cove where the hole is right yeah we could see the creation of that like that would be so cool do you know do you know what that person is standing there you know what he's saying i am spartacus (laughs) 
<laughs> so the, the, this uh, this might be my favorite part because of the intrigue and what it could mean not just to this show and not just to the lore of the sith or in the jedi but also how it just adds layers to our watch our watching of all of this and it's mm -hmm. still on its own but it has a loose connection to luke skywalker and, and the jedi and i think there's a lot they can do with that so i'm very intrigued if this is octo and i really hope it is i think that's going to be big time <laughs> And they just fail their marketing campaign by being like, find out more about The Last Jedi. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <clears throat> um, and that that guy in the middle, so what was his character's name? He's the one who said... It he's seems the like rule he's follower, the but everything by the book, Jedi Knight. He's like, they're killing Jedi and it doesn't make sense. I think that's him who says that. Um, yeah, Daphne Keen's going to be a really cool character. Um, I liked the just surface level cool aspect as to why this character was made. And Leslie Headland said she just wanted to see the girl who played X23 with a lightsaber. I'm like, that is perfect. Yeah. Is <laughs> and also, cool. sometimes it's not that serious. Station. And I it love doesn't that. Have Jabba's Jabba's Palace. It does not. And I love that answer because I think people look at Leslie Headland sometimes as an intellectual and an artiste. And she like everything has a metaphor to it. And she's like, she's like, no, dude, I wanted to see X-23 with the lightsaber. And I'm like, that's amazing. That's perfect. I love it. Love that. Big fan of that. Um, but yeah. Speaking well, there are other of anything else from this, the trailer? Um, I mean, we oh. really talked through all the, the, the pictures and stuff. But yeah, I mean, there's plenty probably that we could dissect for a while. <laughs> a lot of... Yeah. A lot of lightsaber restraint I'm seeing in these fights. Like we're seeing these hand-to-hand -hand kung fu based battles. We're even see, we even see knives drawn. We see mm -hmm. a lot of things. Why not? Oh, we see that these are Jedi not using their lightsabers. Is this a similar sort of situation where Obi Wan didn't want to ignite his lightsaber to have the uh, Inquisitors sense him? Like. So was the warning by that witch saying like, you know, you need to not go in hiding, but you need to like lay low. Like there, there's a reason why we're not seeing these lightsabers being ignited in these fights. And then at the end, of course, something big enough happens where they're all like, okay, we have to use our lightsabers now because that threat that we were warned about is here and there's mm -hmm. no reason to hide it anymore. Right. Like who's pulling out a knife in a Jedi fight? Brought a knife to a lightsaber fight. Who's doing that? Is well, May is <laughs> multiple times. <laughs> She's yeah, just pulling her knife out all the time. She must have a lightsaber, though. Is did did May go to this island to see this character standing on that little rock? And then now, after they've met, they go into like where she lives, and this is like her little cave house, and they're talking. She got windows. That's nice. She does have windows, and I'm trying to. I know what you're saying, James, because it's like you know, could she be living on the island that Luke eventually lives on? You know, or well, a different island. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, let's just for a second just say the lighting is similar. The coloring. The is lighting similar. is similar. The coloring, and then I was kind of thinking about like the the silhouette of the character. Maybe you know, you wouldn't be able to see the braids, but like right. And the other thing too is she could be here you know, hiding out or in isolation or solitary because maybe she had that coven back in the day with the Jedi, got into a fight with the Jedi, they killed her coven, and now she's gone into hiding. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So, like, she's telling her, like, telling, I'm assuming May because she's the protagonist, like, hey, darkness is coming. I've seen it, and the Jedi aren't who they say they are. Yeah, I don't know. Because the coloring, like you said, is we were saying is very similar and usually with these trailers you can kind of pick that apart because they are very s different based on lighting and location of what the coloring is like mm -hmm. if you go to the ice snow planet it's like very blue this is very grayish green yeah yeah that's true and then yeah, the night I scene is very kind of reddish brown yeah yeah, I like that there's going to be so many different locations and, uh, you know, a lot of actual physical places that they went to. So I think like this show is going to be the best of both worlds. And I said this on the reaction me and James did, but it's like Andor had the real tangible aesthetic landscape filming the way that people may have 
gotten a little tired of the volume stuff, but Acolyte's taking that, but adding the lore and fantastical stuff that people were missing from Andor. So it's like the best of both bridged together. And if this executes the way that we're hoping, this could end up being the most satisfying Star Wars Disney Plus series in terms of a combination of how it looks, but with lore and story and, and the, the good old Star Wars stuff that we like that is not from Cause, this galaxy. Because I do think that Obi-Wan was received a little underwhelmingly, but that means that at this point, it's been like, oh, oh are you going to do a show about the Jedi? Like, no, Mandalorian. Oh, okay. You're going to do a show about the Jedi? No, it's Andor. Okay. Mm -hmm. You're going to do a show about Obi-Wan? Like, you know, and it's like, yeah, we did. But like, everybody's like, oh, you know, <laughs> like it wasn't <laughs> as well received. So I think, I think that if we are looking, I mean, we're getting Ahsoka. So that is happening. And I think people were pretty receptive to that. But I think if you go into this and you're like, Ooh, dark side and Jedi and stuff. It's like, oh, that's Star Wars. Like that's that feels like Star Wars to a lot of people. So I think yeah. this could be, and maybe that's why the trailer did so well. Um, just people are excited. I know, I know that I usually get tweets from people, or not tweets, sorry, uh, like texts from people that are like, "Hey, did you see this? Like a new Star Wars show that I've known about for you know <laughs> two years, probably." Right. But I right. got I got more texts from people uh, about the acolyte being like what is this? Like, whoa, what do you, what do you, what is the show? Can you tell me about it? And I'm like, yeah, I've known about, I've already seen a trailer for this like a year ago, but, um, but yeah, it's funny that, uh, it does seem like there's been a good response to the show. I think. Yeah. I think the only thing that may rub some people the wrong way, which I am, I like that if they did this is showing a little bit of the beginning of the, fault and slip ups of the Jedi and just you know she's saying like we're flipping the vantage point where the underdogs are the dark side here the Jedi are the established order so from a story perspective they're like the Empire in this story not mm -hmm. evil but they're the big established fat institution and the Sith are like we're the outcasts we're not in power we think we're right. We th we think you're wrong. And the Jedi, like, there could From be that point of view. The Jedi are evil. Well, they, yeah, <laughs> you know, like for wrestling fans, like when WWF bought WCW and they were the only one around, they were like, "We'll do whatever we want." And the product got worse because they're like, "We don't have competition." The same thing. The Sith go away. The Jedi, are like, we got this. We're fine. Let's just do whatever we want to do. And then with that comes slipping. And I think we're beginning to see that. Uh, happen here and i think so that's you're gonna be saying i think people might be upset that the jedi are going to be painted in a not a weak light but in an arrogant sort of um like we are too big to fail light and i think that's i think that's going to happen but i want it to happen so you're saying disney should license star wars to other studios no no <laughs> as I'm well not saying that uh, yeah, no, no. <laughs> and then all the different studios are making Star Wars and we get competition and no, Star Wars nope. gets better. <laughs> no, not saying that. <laughs> all right. Nope. Okay. In story only. In yeah. story only. Um, but yeah. So uh, any other elements of the trailer? I know we talked about a lot of what Leslie Headland said in her interviews. I don't know if there's anything yeah. else from those interviews we want to talk about because we also wanted to touch on Bad Batch uh, uh, for a few minutes too. Um canonizing a species do you think you guys think that's boffins she mentioned that she was going to canonize a species never seen before no because the boffins are canon they're in canon we haven't seen them no so no, no she's talking well, about... oh not wow is that what you mean yeah I, I think she means there was a species in uh legends or eu that has not been brought into canon yet because she definitely so we, did say thing about legends and e EU lore that she is making yeah. more prominent in this. Yeah. And I think those are bits and pieces that are pulled. Uh, like when people see or talk about like when the creators like Dave Filoni talking about expanded universe and legend stuff, I think sometimes our minds go like huge wide net things like the Yuzon Vong or, you know, all these big villains that were, you know, Prince Zizor or whatever. I think they're just borrowing little things here and there 
And I think, you know, she's pulling in a species or something like that, or maybe a cool thing she saw from a book or, you know, as a nod to that. I don't think they're going to, and I don't think they should just take an idea that happened in those books and be like, now we're going to use it and make it ours. Yours is still not canon. We're doing our version of it. I think that's a mistake. So I think anytime they're going to borrow from you, it's going to be like these little smaller things like Mm -hmm. a a species being canonized. And it could, it could be as simple as like the Okey pokies in the rise of Skywalker being on a flyby and be like, see, (laughs) there they are. That's those things from that cartoon that was on, uh, you know, for three minutes on the holiday special or something, you know? I don't, yeah. So, but uh, anyway, uh, anything else on uh, Acolyte or, or what Leslie? Hedlund I mean, we can, say? we could keep talking about this for hours. Cause she definitely talked about yeah. like how the stunt work was so crazy and yeah. Carrie and Moss and Amanda and Lee Jung Jay did all their own, most of their stunt work yeah. on their own so and cool. bringing yeah. him in, even though he's never done English acting and she's right. just like, that's who I want. Like there was a lot to it. And I think we're she took probably a lot of dissect riff. those. Right. And going back to what she said previously to plays into this interview, which is she did a lot of research into where she wanted to go across the galaxy and, you know, Indiana Jones type traveling around. The Atlas. Yeah. The Atlas. She, she talked about how she wrote fanfic growing up and how George Lucas created this world that you can just disappear and escape into kind of like Narnia and play in. And then when you're ready to come back, you can leave it type thing and then go back. G- my favorite thing she did say previously, and I think she's brought it up a couple times in previous uh, interviews, but then also in this one a little bit with Collider was her talking about, again, how she did have one writer in the room that didn't know Star Wars, had never seen yeah. it, doesn't know anything about it because she wanted to have someone that would question things for the person that's never been into Star Wars. So It was your husband. It was Matt. It was Matt. Matt was the writer for the show. <laughs> no, but it's just... I think that's such a smart plan. And I think oftentimes that gets lost on all this kind of pop culture fandom stuff is that you don't recognize that there are people that aren't into these things. So if Mm -hmm. you want new fans to get invested, you have to bring in someone that doesn't know what you're talking about. Because just like I said earlier, you show them a trailer and they have no idea what's going on. Right. And Mm -hmm. that's twofold too, because I actually, I didn't consider it from the perspective of we need this person who doesn't know Star Wars to ask the questions for people that don't understand Star Wars watching this for the first time, I all, I took it as the sort of like we like what we've done with um, uh, Rogue One. Now I'm blanking on his name. The guy is doing Rogue One. Tony Gilroy. Tony Gilroy. I kept wanting to say Gary. Wada. That's not right. <laughs> but um, Tony Gilroy. Yeah, he was not like a Star Wars fan. He was like brought in and was writing this stuff. He got it. He so was speak. Yeah, well, he was just writing it from like, these are good characters and like they Mm -hmm. added the Star Wars aspects to it. But like to have a writer in the room that's also like, you know, this doesn't make sense from a storytelling point of view. And the other people, you know, saying, oh, well, it made sense to us because we're Star Wars fans. Yeah, I don't know. Sure. I thought I I took it more of like a story thing and you took it more of like a for people seeing it for the first time to ask the right questions. So I think both are perfect examples of why to do that and that's a good move i think everything leslie headland has been amazing like everything she said has been amazing and everything where she's coming from is such a place of passion and care that the hate i'm seeing online and the automatic refusal of things just of because of who she is is insane to me uh and i think that goes back to what we were discussing earlier with the trailer getting so many down votes i think people are just bored (laughs) like what is going on um, and I just advise people to give it a chance before you immediately say no to it because it might end up being something that you love. And we see that all the time with movies like Solo, yeah. where people immediately said no to it and then they come back and said, Man, I should have seen it in the theater. And that's why we're constantly yeah. saying, you know, make Solo 2 happen because so many people have come around on it. And I don't think that's yeah. just Star Wars. I think in general, a lot of people do that, like, oh, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna watch that. And then years later they watch it and they're like, Man, I missed out. I missed out on the community aspect, I missed out on the hype. And I'm not saying to be like super positive and like, oh, everything's amazing because it's okay to criticize things and not like things. We do it all the time. Oh, yeah, totally. I talk about how much I hate Palpatine all the time. Um, But I think that everything she says in these interviews makes me hyped because she's really in it. And 
I think that even if ultimately I don't agree with all the choices that she makes or I don't like things that she's done, she's still doing them. And I, I feel the same way with like Ryan Johnson. Like I don't agree with every choice that he made, but he made them. And I, and I value that. And I, and I trust that he did what he thought he should do with the characters. It's mm-hmm. not my story to tell. And I think people need to have a little bit more respect and separation from who the yeah, creator is versus what the product yeah. is. This is something that's been five years in the making. You know, Leslie Headland right. at the premiere of Rise of Skywalker. Little did we know she was having discussions with Kathleen Kennedy about this show. And that's a long time. And now we're about a month, like a couple months away from it to come out. She directed the first two episodes, which are probably going to pair nicely. And, you know, this thing's going to, before we know, it's going to be gone. You know, July 16th, I think, is the finale. And hopefully, you know, it does well and we get to see the continuation of the story. But I, I agree, Lacey. Like, I would never want this to happen. But just for an experiment, wouldn't it be really funny if they said, like, Zack Snyder was making this the whole time? And then it comes out and all those people are like, this is the great star. Finally, Star Wars is great. We're like, just kidding. It was Leslie <laughs> Headland. Their heads will explode. <laughs> I mean, I've already seen people online comparing this to Rebel Moon, which I'm going to be completely honest. I haven't even watched that yet. And I was hyping that up for like ever. And then I had a kid. I didn't, yeah. I didn't watch it either. Um, yeah. I got to get on that. Uh, but I've seen people it. comparing them and they don't seem similar at all. I think just people assume that if there's a darker vibe, they're like, oh, Zack Snyder. And I'm like, people do dark vibes without it being Zack Snyder. Yeah. yeah. You know, I did not make that comparison, but now that you guys are saying that between Rebel Moon and, and this, it does does kind of seem similar at parts. A little so bit. here's here's something crazy that I'm going to say, and I don't necessarily believe it, but I'm going to say it just because I just thought of it. Uh, Mm -hmm. is weeks ago we talked about the director of John Wick talking about how he wanted to do a lone wolf cub show and basically pitched them on the Mandalorian and later the Mandalorian came out like people are saying Rebel Moon is very similar to this what if (laughs) Zack Snyder pitched his Rebel Moon idea and it's this idea and they're moving forward with this idea and he's just like (laughs) <laughs> like, because it just seems to keep happening. <laughs> I'm not saying that that's the case, but no, it's just yeah, funny to me yeah. that it's like, yeah. I think people that would just be like similar things, you know? Yeah, that would be funny. Uh, <laughs> guys, go, even if you don't like the movie or whatever, like Rebel Moon is, is worth it to check out just from the, ch- just from the standpoint of literally him saying, I want, I had an idea. It was a Star Wars pitch. I pitched it to him. And then they said, we don't want to go down that route for these reasons. And he said, okay, I'll just change it and make it this, this other world, you know? Mm -hmm. And so you can watch that movie with these sort of eyes of like, this is, this was almost Star Wars. It just tweaked little things about it and put Star Wars into it. And this could have been a movie that we got in theaters you know, and it would have been Star Wars. It it's just interesting. It's almost like uh, it's almost like when they did. <laughs> it's funny because it's Jack Zack Snyder, but it's almost funny when you watch Justice League and then you see like his, and you're like, weird. It's the same movie, <laughs> but it's clearly different for these oh, reasons. These stylistic different. choices. Yeah. You very rarely do you ever actually get to see a movie like remade by a different director and it but like it's not even a remake it's like the same movie i don't know it's just strange mm-hmm. but go check out rebel moon for that that reason uh, alone just to watch it through the eyes of this was almost star wars you know right yeah it's kind of neat yeah um but um we, we're going to be doing ask the resistance here in a second if you guys have ask the resistance questions use the hashtag ask the resistance throw it into the uh chat and we will get to them, uh, but really quickly before we end up uh, the resistance report, we're going to talk about Bad Batch really quick. I did my reaction to episode eight. It is up on the channel if you guys want to check that out. Kind of talked about uh, the episode and a little bit of a review, um, just how I felt about it. My connections to Metal Gear Solid for anybody that uh, is excited about that. John, I was going to ask you, what did you think about episode eight? I I don't know. I don't know if anyone else felt this way, but I felt like the um creature they were hunting that that sort of praying mantis guy sounded oh, siler yeah it was almost think... like they used verbatim the sound effect from the predator did you feel that way i didn't put that t- 
together. I can't remember the sound effect now. It's like neon green, like blood <laughs> or whatever. I'm like, is this a nod to Predator? Because they've been doing nods to Jurassic Park. Like, I wonder if they're doing nods to these movies and whatever that they love. But I, I, I like the crosshair and Omega stuff. I like the humanization of crosshair. And clearly there's something there. There's a big vulnerability that is escalating with him that either he's going to completely get over because they, they affirmed that it's probably in his mind. Yeah. Um, which I'd like to see. Um, but overall, I thought, I thought it was a, a quickly too. What do you think about the Omega meditation stuff? Like we already are on this line where she's like at a high M count. I she's like, you, you should try meditating and, and, and yeah. this yoga I, stuff I think... on top of the mountain in front of the sunset. It's like, Oh my gosh. Yeah. Like, yeah. So that could go into helping heal crosshair for sure. And it, I saw your, post on twitter about how it reminded you of uh, luke in the last jedi which i it did look like that yeah i hashtag the bad batch and then i said oh wrong yeah. picture and then i put the actual picture of bad <laughs> batch yeah but overall I, I i liked it um you know short breezy good action but also like when you put the two stories against each other you know the bounty hunt fennec shand um who's she talking to i, I see everyone saying they think it's Asajj Ventress. Uh, I think that makes sense, especially as we're, we're getting close. We only have a few episodes left, like six, seven episodes left. Um, but it made me think with Fennec Shand sort of having a bigger stake in this now, uh, like for some reason I thought in my head, I'm like, Fennec Shand's probably going to return in live action. And I'm like, now I'm starting to think the Bad Batch, like at least some of them are going to show up too. Like jump over the original trilogy and they'll be older, and it'll be Tamara Morrison's, like a bunch oh. of Tamara Morrison's. But you might see some of the Bad Batch in live action, like I mean, not in like a big they, role, but in a in an action sequence. So if people they can be did like, a book oh. of Boba Fett too. You get you get Boba Fett and Fennec Shand, but then she's reconnecting with, and then there's like three other Tamara Morrison's and Omega Boba Fett's sister. It's like all yeah. connected, maybe. Uh, yeah. And that's a wild theory, but I think that's too much live action. Of the you same never know. character. Also, it depends on the when you have like plus. crosshair who's like skinnier. He is skinnier. And, and really he almost seems taller too. Yeah. Yeah. And um, Wrecker. Obviously, they're like going to put his face on, on the big, be pretty funny. On a it'd, big one. It'd be like Vinnie Jones in uh, X Men as the, the juggernaut. Yeah. Um, crazy. Uh, but, um, but the whole, like, I just got to say it one more time the Hunter stuff with Metal Gear, that's it's such a crazy homage in my eyes i already thought the character looked like snake from that game and then finally they're like well oh, we're gonna match the tone and put them on the boat and stick them mm -hmm. in the water and all this stuff and i'm like this so clearly feels like metal gear 3 i'd love to you know ask about that but uh but anyway let's go ahead and uh get to some questions uh we're gonna jump over to ask the resistance i've been wondering what are midi chlorians let us do it. Um, all right. So we will start with uh, Jeff Caves. We do have a and... super chat. Did you want to do the oh, super, yeah, we'll super chat first? Yeah, Hi, super my name chat. is Jeff. Not so a question, we have... but we're going to super chat. <laughs> so we have a super chat from Elliot. Hey, Elliot. Uh, and uh, he says, Dean Charles Chapman is the villain. I'm calling it. So I'm not going to lie, Elliot. I did a quick Google search uh, to see who this is because I don't know who this is. Uh, and he was, in fact, at Celebration for the Acolyte trailer. He showed up. He was the guy that was there. His name, his character's name is Torben. Uh, he is currently not listed on the Star Wars databank. And you do not really see him on the web, on in the trailer at all. Um, so two options, Elliot. He either got cut from the trailer and he doesn't exist. Or he's an alien. Or he is the bad guy. Plagueis. He's Plagueis. Well, that's what people are saying is that he's a very similar head shape of Palpatine. And all I can say is, please, no, do it's not do not this, Palpatine. Leslie. Palpatine's not born. He's not born. Don't do this. <laughs> do not do this. Uh, no, but that's a very interesting call, Elliot. I appreciate the super chat. We do. We all appreciate it. Um, but yeah, we'll see if he is the villain or not. From New Zealand? He hasn't too? Shown, yeah, he hasn't shown up yet. That is interesting, Elliot. We may have to revisit this. Um, it's funny that you say that, too, because he he's an English actor known for portraying Billy Elliot. Was he? Yep. Oh, I don't know. 
uh, in, in one of in a theater production. Yeah. Interesting. Anyway. Next is Christian Morales. What up, Christian? He's thanks for the super chat. So nice of you. He said, for I'm sure. so happy I was able to join the live stream today. We're so happy you are too. Woohoo. I missed it. We missed you. Anyways, here's my ask the resistant question. Do you think the acolyte will show us our first lightsaber crystal bleeding? You guys oh, are awesome. Great question. I'm going to start with James. James, what do you think? Yeah, I hope. I, I do. I think it'll happen. Um, yeah, let's let's do it. Uh, let's say that um, when we first meet May, she does not have a lightsaber. Then she goes to the forest. She bleeds it out. And when she throws it for the first time, that's uh that's the first time she's using her dark red so the, the even further than that the first time they see that red lightsaber is the first time they see a red lightsaber i don't think she's the first to ever do it how do we know that though like what if that's the first red lightsaber any of those people have seen and it's coming flying at their faces? I don't doubt that it might be the first red lightsaber that any of the Jedi that's have seen. Cool. <laughs> Could you but imagine I... like you're this Jedi and you're like, I'm saving the world. And then you're like, what is that? Is that a lightsaber? Is it red? It's going to kill me. <laughs> My thought would be that the art of bleeding the lightsaber has been around since the Sith. And that also it would be connected to the lightsaber in that sense of like, you're taking the weapon that you used when you were a Jedi. And when they, the Sith split, they bled their lightsabers and it's a oh, traditional God. thing. I don't think this is the first time it's if it happens in the show and they show they say, Hey, we're going to do this thing. And this is how it happens. That's cool. That's fine. But yeah. if my gut says, I think it's been a long-standing tradition, but I would like to see it happen this time once in live action. That would be really cool. Yeah, and people but are saying that Snow Planner is Ilum, and they think it's like the Jedi going to get crystals and stuff. That'd be cool, too. I mean, be cool. Man. Christian, thank you. I don't have a stake in this because I hate the whole lightsaber bleeding thing. He really does. I, I miss when the lightsaber was just a weapon. And it was a cool weapon. I don't need to talk to my crystal and tell it what uh, hue to have. But <laughs> I still I still appreciate people loving it. It's just personally not a fan. Not a fan of that. Well, I, think I think it'd be really cool to see because I, I want to yeah. see it. Everybody talks about people doing it. Ben Solo did it. Everybody, you know, all these people did it. I want to see what it what happens. Well, I just realized that what I described is also Linkin Park lyrics. I bleed it out, digging deeper just to throw it away. Oh, there you go. There you go. That band, <laughs> big time. All right. Bob John. Dylan Next. of the 2000s. Um, <laughs> all right. Next, uh, we're going to go to Jeff Caves. Uh, Jeff, we are going to talk about this on Monday. Um, we're also doing an all Acolyte version of Will the Force Monday, including Patreon submitted topics. By the way, if you haven't joined our Patreon yet and you like the podcast, definitely at least check it out. Like go to patreon.com slash resistance broadcast. We have a bunch of tiers. They start at two bucks or five bucks a month. And you get to get immediate access to all of our exclusive episodes that we do just on Patreon. You could submit topics to the show. You can get on the show. Uh, so go check it out. Uh, honestly, if, if even a half of our listeners joined at the first tier, uh, we could really blow this thing up and expand in in ways that we wouldn't have imagined so if you're able to i know things are crazy um check it out consider supporting us on patreon we appreciate it um the other yeah, way you can support as well is patreon has a free option um and you don't necessarily get all the perks that john just talked about but but just joining free you do get alerts anytime we put out something so anytime we put out an episode or anything public whether it be uh, a full episode or a trailer reaction or anything like that you get alerted via email that those things go out so you never miss anything so that's another option if you're looking to support the podcast in a way uh but don't want to join the actual paid part of patreon right mm -hmm. yep um but yeah jeff monday we're gonna talk a lot about that so i uh, appreciate it um next we will go to uh kenny uh kenny Crayley. And Kenny said, hey, TRB, love the work you do. Thank you, Kenny. You're always so supportive and kind. Appreciate that, man. And hope you're excited for Superman. I see you're wearing a Superman shirt. 
Um, my question is back in the day when Star Wars had no movies after 1983 to 1999, how do you get your Star Wars fix? Thanks, guys. Uh, I did, I didn't really, I didn't become, I liked Star Wars, but I didn't become a big Star Wars fan until the special editions came out. What do you, I mean, we've, we've sort of talked about that, Lacey. Same with you with the, the THX set. You got it, St- Stu Leonard's, right? <laughs> yeah, I became a fan in, in second grade. And then after that, I was kind of done for in the sense of mm-hmm. I was just obsessed with it. Um, but during that time, I would like run to the library to get the books, the Legends books and read those. Um, but I mean, that was pretty much it. It's just kind of imagination like any other Star Wars fan, like pretending adventures and hoping that someday we'll get to return to the galaxy on the big screen. And when that happened, it was like I, re- I remember exactly where I was when it when they made the announcement. I was like screaming straight up screaming. Mm-hmm. It's funny. It's almost impossible to remember a time before the current content. So it's like, what were you doing before the prequels were out? And we didn't know any of that stuff. It's like really hard to imagine like what I remember thinking about and speculating on. And it reminds me of this thing where every time I see a new piece of content, um, specifically movies, uh, when I, when I'm about to go in for the movie, I'll be like standing in line outside of the theater. And I just, I keep, soaking in that moment of this is the last point in my life that I don't know what's going to happen in solo. You know, from this point on for the rest of my life, I will know that story. I know what happens in it. I can remember it from beginning to end, but right now this is the last hour of my life that I don't know how that, that story goes. And so it's an interesting time to kind of, collect your thoughts on you know the everything leading up to this point and then from that point forward your life and and your star wars fandom changes forever because this other piece of property now exists and can be correlated into everything else nice nice man um all right let's do some rapid fire to to close it out to try to get through as many as we can let's do birkin altanak uh Great name. Uh, Great yeah. Name. So Birkin said, guys, could that be Plo Koon at the 55 second mark in the bottom right? Uh, James, I think you would uh, speculated. You, you went back and forth. You had a nice little chat with yourself on Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So here's the thing is that I um, I was looking for a photo, but I actually don't think they released it as a photo. Um, it's just in the trailer. Um. Yeah, I I went to his page and I or I looked up the species and it said that they only lasted for or they only lived for 70 plus years. So I took that screenshot and I said, sadly, I don't think it's Plo Koon. Their species is just a normal like average lifespan. So that doesn't make any sense. And then I got a bunch of responses from people saying that was Legends. And I looked, I was on Legends. Oops. Uh, but then uh even more so is that it had been clarified that he was in fact like 230 something years old when he died uh, and all this other stuff. Yeah. And I was like, what a way to go down too, right? You live with that huge long time. Yeah. You go to the Canon page, you look at it and it's very clearly like stating that um, within like this planet's, you know, year span, uh, it, it just he, he seems like he's multiple hundred years old. So mm-hmm. I just immediately said that that's got to be that's got to be the nod. That's got to be the reference. I'm sure this is that character. If that character is around, there's bunch there's a, a good handful of characters that could show up in this show. But Yoda's the number one. And then after that, it's got to be Plo Koon. And I'm saying, and stick to the corner, it kind of makes sense to me. I think Dave Filoni's obsessed with that character, and Leslie did it for Dave Filoni. They had a meeting. Say. Dave Filoni's like, I love Plo Koon. She's like, okay, I'll put him in there. Yeah, I was going to say, let's just not forget who is the creative executive now of Lucasfilm. And uh, for The Mandalorian, when Luke showed up, he had put Plo Koon in there. Like, that's his favorite character to throw in there. I have yeah. no doubt that they put that in there for Dave Filoni. Um, yeah, I'm cool with that. I think it's him. I, I don't think you tease fans with that and then have it not be him. Um, right. So let us go to our next one from Talking Star Wars, which is what we're doing right now. So that's a very good <laughs> name. Thank you. And they said, who's holding the red saber at the end? Lacey, who's holding it? 
I think it's Amandla, but everyone doesn't think that, but I'm going to stick with that. Hmm. Um, you don't want to know what my guess is? It's yes. going to be May. Oh, okay. Man. <laughs> <sighs> A.K.A. Amandla. <laughs> yeah. John? I uh, think it's going to be... Darth Plagueis. The Acolyte. Oh, I think it's Darth Plagueis. Yep. Uh, uh, it's, uh, that's, it's probably wrong. It's probably like Carrie Ann Moss or something like that. Mm. But uh, it'd be cool if it was Plagueis. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's Justin Timberlake. Um, Anything else? <laughs> yeah, let's go to... We're going to go to Matt the Collector. What about the short runtime episodes? Uh, they said you know thirty to forty minutes, and for eight episodes, I'm I'm completely okay with that. How about you guys? I Was think that's solid. That's normal. Confirmed. They said like, thirty what? to forty minutes in the interviews. So. Oh uh, yeah. That then yeah. Uh, that's normal. Yeah, I guess. Yeah. yeah. I think we're good. How many episodes are there? Eight. Eight. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's I think it's four good hours stuff. of content. I'm cool with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, last one here. He's back. It's Christian Morales. <laughs> and he said, are we getting Saki in Japan or what? Yes. Saki it to me, baby. Let's do it. To quote Austin Powers. <laughs> okay. Lacey, and do some Saki bombs? I don't know. We'll see. That's a maybe, folks. That is a maybe. I'll give you a maybe. How about that? All right. Let me know in a year when we're a month away from going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, all right. That is it for the show. So we want to thank everybody for listening and watching and being a part of TRB. Um, make sure you are subbed on your favorite platforms, as we said at the top. And spread the word. Tell your friends. If you had a good time checking out our show, maybe it's the first time you've checked out our show. Maybe you saw our reactions and then it made you subscribe. And now you're here and you're like, you know what? They are pretty cool. Tell your friends. Please spread the word. It really means a lot and it helps us out. Uh, I did mention Patreon before. We have to give a special shout out to our generals and spice runners on Patreon. Uh, Carmelo, John Reese, Jetta Rosewater, Frank Grande, Nick Kratz, Chris Morales, Brian Smith, Matt Chitty, Danny, Mike Ramori, Brendan McLaughlin, Sneaky Zebra, Colin Cormier, Dave Hornack, and Jolton Jedi DiMaggio, and the spice runners, David Probus, Neil Shaw, Kendall Gellner, Andrew Staley, who will be on the show Monday in the Patreon pod race, mm -hmm. Jeremy Myers, who is probably already training for his beverages in Japan and the Fort Worthy and, and all of our supporters, however you support TRB. Thank you all so, so, so much. Uh, Johnny Hoey for me on X and Threads and Blue Skies and that. Um, and TRB podcasts for us and uh, my movie podcast, just like the movies. Doing Back to the Future next week. Uh, Gilly, you're up. Where can people hit you up? People can find me on social media at Lacey Gillerin and on TikTok at It's Lacey Gillerin. And just a big reminder that while we do have Patreon, which is also a great option and a great community, and we appreciate your support, the best way you can support us is following us on social media at TRB Podcasts and uh, reviewing us on audio platforms like Spotify and Apple Podcasts. It means a lot. It helps people find us, um, as well as just sharing your favorite part of an episode or sharing screenshots of an episode or keeping the discussion going online, letting people know we exist is just the number way one number one way you can help us. And it means a lot to us. You can also see me here on the channel. I did do a reaction to the acolyte trailer after these guys did. I was a little late to the party because <laughs> I had some issues uploading, yeah. but it is there um, as well as, you know, and other videos on the channel to come. Mm -hmm. James. Um, social media at Myra Trunks uh, for the next a few more weeks. Uh, Bad Batch reaction show. I'll be reacting to each episode as they come out. Um, and then, uh, as Lacey said, we were talking about the Acolyte trailer. Me and John both did an Acolyte trailer reaction. So if you haven't seen that yet, go see our initial watch of it uh, along with Lacey's too. Why not? And someone just signed up on Patreon. So thank you, Hom Dam. Woohoo! Hom yeah. Dam. Thank you so much. <laughs> Enjoy. Welcome. Oh, Welcome to the party. A major level. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Submit, yeah, you can submit topics for Will the Force. Uh, we have them already set for Monday, but for the next week. But anyway, thank you so much. Uh, join the party. Um, but yeah, thank you all so, so, so much. Um, I also did a reaction to the Beetlejuice Beetlejuice. <laughs> right. 
trailer on our channel because I'm a big Michael Keaton fan and uh, Tim Burton fan, Catherine O'Hara fan. I love that whole cast. Danny Elfman music is back. So, um, yeah, check that out. But uh, check us out on Monday. We'll be back talking a lot more about the Acolyte, a lot more of speculating, Will of the Force discussions, Yoda, and all that stuff. So enjoy your weekends. Uh, and hopefully now that spring is here, things start to heat up the way the Acolyte is starting to heat up. And we'll see you Monday morning right here on the Resistance broadcast. See you around, kids.